suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! yesterday the guy asked me to be there at 4 30 and i'm glad he did because the place was fucking slammed yeah i would have never been able to make it there no you wouldn't have but i mean it was so busy but i did get invited to come down to tell you right and ski anytime i want by the old gentleman sitting next to me which was kind of odd uh i told morgan about it he wants to have sex with you come to my wife died chalet is this chalet or Shall I? His wife died in August, and so he was just looking for a friend. He says he comes up to the bar and orders pizza and hangs out. <laughs> Let's <Jesus>. order pizza. <laughs> Y'all are so mean to the older demographics. Do you like your pizza spanked? <laughs> <laughs> Extra pepperoni? Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Stoned Appetite with your host. As always, it's me, Chris. Kip, and to my left, I've got Chris. Uh, shout out. We're going to talk a little bit more about cannabis in 2024. Primarily, we're going to do product reviews of things we like and things that we don't like. Um, today, we're definitely high as shit on the open seshware. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's an inconspicuous way to smoke cannabis. Um, it's delicious. Also, shout out to our sponsors over at Connect for Health Colorado. We'll dive into all that later. Chris, how are you? Uh, Stoned? Yeah, a little bit. And, uh, I mean, shocker. Uh, it's a good way to enter 2024. And we're all here in the studio, which I love. I love when we all get to hang out. And Eve is here, too. Yay. I know. Um, y'all, as we've been telling y'all, we're going to get this video series launched. We have a couple more things we're putting on the walls. And then we're going to practice our our balls off and see how well we can do so that we can start seeing all of our content in video form as well as audio. But for right now, you've got us right here in studio on audio, and we've got Eve on the ones and twos. Evatha, how are you, queen? I'm good, Kim. Thank you. How was your new year? It's good. Yeah? yeah? Meet any old men at the bar that invite you to tell your ride? <laughs> you missed out. <laughs> Ugh. Well, she's a woman of many words, as y'all can tell her <laughs> always. We've got a great episode for y'all. We're going to recap a little bit of the holiday gauntlet, best things we had to eat. Um, Kip went a little vicious in what we were going to do in a viral or a, just a virtual episode between CB and I over the holidays. But we opted not to do like a – it was pretty much a Festivus. It was like a Kramer and Frank – uh, Costanza vibe because I was just airing everything out. I mean, I, I looked like a – Patrick Mahomes throwing 70 yarders. So much tea spilt all over the community. Uh, but we're not going to, we're going to keep it a little docile. We'll talk a little bit about it. We did air out some, we did clean some laundry though yesterday. Like we gave some shout outs to some people out there that, you know, we forgot to mention last week when we were discussing some of our favorites and things like that so we threw some good shout outs yeah we did and uh, we would be remiss if we didn't give a shout out to our sponsors connect for health colorado there's only as you listen to this 11 days left before open enrollment closes for 2024 so if you are not covered for health insurance this is your last call everybody knows that saying from other reasons well don't be remiss. Do not go without in 2024. You can go over to connect for F O R health C O dot com and schedule time to speak with a specialist no matter your situation whether you have a job or you don't maybe you don't have a lot of walking around cash and you don't need to be adding an extra bill to your budget fret not they have people that are there to work within any of the confines maybe you're covered from your office but your family's not, and you need a better package. They can help out in anything. Are you new to our country trying to figure out you know, how to navigate the health care system? It's a fucking bitch, trust me. But if you're listening to this from out abroad and you're here, they have folks to help you out. Do not go without insurance in 2024. Goodness gracious, I can't say it enough. You're going to hear me say it every day for the next two weeks. 
Go to connectforhealthco.com. Get registered today. All right. Y'all, I can't, I mean, it costs the, I mean, shout out to Gavin Newsom. He's going to get, you know, all of our undocumented um, citizens health insurance in California to the tune of $3 billion. But when you think of how much money you're saving by lost wages and lost costs through the healthcare system that they have to either bite the bullet on, it makes sense for all parties involved. So no matter the situation, get you some insurance. All right, Chris. Yeah, what do you want to dive into first? We want to recap San Diego, recap the new year. Let's hear what Eve did. Give us your spiel. How was your holidays? The holidays were fantastic. I mean, to be honest with you, not having to travel across the U.S. to go back to Alabama, I mean, I couldn't have, I couldn't have wished for more. But I went the other way, just a two-hour skip over to San Diego, and it was hot. And I, be, and I mean, temperature-wise and just good vibes. Uh, it really wasn't that hot temperature-wise, but it felt warm because the sun was shining. It was like, it was in the high 60s. Calm down, Eve. Don't. She's going to end up being our virtual producer, Chris. Oh, uh, it was fantastic, though. But you know, like I obviously like hit up my favorites uh, for some seafood, like Mitch's seafood, just that fresh one right there on the dock. Uh, went to the Cotijas for the shrimp quesadilla. God damn! I wish somebody in our town could make a shrimp quesadilla like that. I, I think Carrera's. Huh? Uh, you the shrimp quesadilla is not something you take a pick of. It's it's huge. It's messed. It's like it's not a. It's huge. It's delicious. <laughs> like nobody wants to see that it's, on the internet. It's. I got a picture of like the octopus tostado and this fish taco I got. Well, I'll next time I'll send you a picture of it, and then you'll be like, Ugh. yeah. I mean it's. What'd you do? For New Jesus York? Christ. But but the best. I like where, yeah. yeah but we just, did. I, I guess we're just going to have to paint a picture. And all I can think about is just eating them in my kitchen because Chris has no way to showcase this restaurant that's so, so glorious. We did go to. Uh, yeah, it's probably good. You're probably. It's like the Epstein logs. Chris's pictures of shrimp quesadillas. We're never going to see it. What? We have a lot of political stuff to talk about. You can't cut that out. So, but we did go. We did go to Mabel's Gone Fishing. Um, and that is, that was a highlight. That's, uh, I guess it got recognized last year as one of the hot up and coming restaurants. Um, but I've never had swordfish as good as it was from there. It was just absolutely stunning. Um, well, how was the new year's? The new year's was great. You know, we did the whole, uh, you know, I'm getting a little bit older. Don't like going out. And plus, I think we kind of touched on this last night. We'll but touch no one on heard it again. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In previous saying. discussions. But no, we went over to a friend's house. Everybody kind of brought a dish. Uh, we ended up playing some some late night card games. There you go. You know, things like that. Just good, clean fun. Here's a question, and this all, will also open up to Eve, even though she's got an older spirit than both you and I. What age do we cut off, like, going hard on New Year's Eve? Because while I didn't go super hard, like, I didn't feel great on New Year's Day, I still was able to get up, make cornbread, make peas, make greens, things of that nature, still be a member of society. Whereas, like, the night, the days after our parties that we host, I cannot. But so that's where – what age do you stop going hard for New Year's? That's a fucking. That's a picture of the shrimp quesadilla. I guess I'm just talking to my goddamn self. Eve, here. answer. <laughs> Eve, at what age did you stop going hard for New Year's? Because never. Uh, <laughs> so. uh, this is awkward. <laughs> Not this weekend. <laughs> I had. I, <laughs> I sang karaoke at 3 a.m. at Stardust Lounge. There's probably some video out there. As well, it's probably not good, but it's out there. So you said twenty five. What is a holiday that you like, like besides Halloween? Like, okay, okay. What time do you go to bed on July fourth? Like, if you drink, day drink, or party all night, maybe you're on the lake. Is that an early night, or do you stay up for fireworks? What? You know, I'm I'm just asking because I feel like I have now hit that age because while I did go hard in the paint last week and really all of 2023, I feel like I, my body is telling me to quit 
right now. They're like, stop it. Like, just take a chill pill. Start going out with Chris, doing potlucks on New Year's Eve, because that sounds... No, it sounds like that's what I should. Oh no, I stayed up till two thirty that night too. So I mean, like, I was I was boozed. I don't even know. Um, I don't remember. I think I went to bed early on New Year's Eve, but I don't really remember. Um, but what I like to do is really ca- capture, seize the day, starting at like ten a.m. with a couple of Rickies. I feel like that's really how you can get yourself into some trouble or some fun. No matter what happens, from there, it's always going to go up. It's the next day. It's the crash that's really making me think that maybe 36, 35 may be the line where you draw it for going hard on New Year's Eve. And if you're an old soul like Eve, 25. Like Okay, I yeah. I, Eve just matured a lot faster than we all did. No, that's definitely sure. Yeah. Like we all ha- I didn't start shaving until I was like 20. How about y'all two? <laughs> Jesus, how hard are you going? Was that was that just your punishment to keep you maintaining like a con- <laughs> So is there like is there really that. no is there really no bottom eve? It's just like zero or a hundred in drinking. Okay. What what, what was I the first? I have the memory of like a goldfish, so it's like, did I? I haven't had a drink in like a day. I should have a drink today. What What were you drinking the last time you fell over the line? What was your drink of choice? Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. It was nineteen ninety nine. The Twin Tower still stood. Boone's Farm that. Strawberry Wine. <laughs> Oh, little G and T's. God, we got. Oh, that's what happened. I'm gonna get. Eve, we're gonna get. Yeah, we're gonna have to find a way to get Eve's a little buzzed up. I can't wait. Um. Well, that, I'm glad to hear that uh, we're all on the same page. That I'm too old to be acting like this. That's wonderful. Eve, I think, obviously, I'm ten years past Eve's. Well, here you are in my basement yet again. So, and I want to say, like around like you know thirty three, thirty four. That's when like not Church going out to it? not going out to concerts as much. Yeah, I think you start dialing back the trips to Red yeah. Rocks and the hallucinogens. Maybe not the hallucinogens, but the other. St- no, uh, those are in play. Yeah, yeah, the other stuff. I feel like hallucinogens and weed are actually better for you for a long night haul because you don't wake up the next day like dragging ass, like you got into a bag of powder and started drinking whiskey and were like one of those, you know, feral animals. You can be feral on mushrooms or acid. It's wonderful. Um, okay, so New Year's Eve was nice. What was the best thing you ate since the last time we all spoke, which was about a week ago? Uh, I'm going to say the thing I most enjoyed was, uh, something we didn't see. Sorry. (laughs) Snarf burger. I grabbed one of those just before I started like really thinking about like, okay, let's, let's take a beat here in January. I wanted to make sure like I got a really good juicy burger and I hadn't tried, I haven't had them in a long time. So I was pleasantly surprised the burger, the double patty and you get their hot peppers on it, it fucking sets it off. The fries and tots, uh, those... Leave a little to be desired? Yeah, you know, I mean, like, there's certain places that do french fries good. Like, we all know McDonald's has great fries, you know? But some of these other places, you just wish they cared more about their fries. And, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. And I wish that some, even like we get yelled at all the time for, oh, why aren't they fresh cut fries? Sometimes if you do a proper shoestring or a McDonald's texture, it, I mean, I'll, I'll substitute a quality fry for a mediocre burg to have that combo platter rather than having like some super great burger. You know, like I'm not, if it has like all, all the accoutrements are just okay. Like yeah. a cherry cricket burger doesn't. It's not great, but it doesn't suck. But the corn nuggets are delicious. And, you know, like think, things like that. The fried apps are good. So if, someone, if I have to go to Cherry Cricket, I'm not going to be totally upset because you can also work your way through the shareables and have yourself a day. See, and that's what sucked because I was really looking forward to some tots. And so when I got them and I tasted one and it was a little bit soggy, I was like, okay, maybe we can, maybe we can save this situation and try to, like, throw them in the oven to crisp them up. And it, it just... 
it didn't, didn't it. work. Um, I had a pretty good burger too, and I'm not like I'm not going to ride your coattails because the Snarf Burger is really good. They've won awards, including Denver Burger Battle and some other things in town, and you can wide find those widely around the city. So that's a great ace to put on people for the year. I had one over at Samosa Shop. Shout out to our friend Dave Hadley. You'll probably have seen him in like a farmers markets and things of that nature he's done pop-ups across the city as well he's now inside of honor farms which is the former blake street vault you remember that bar they have the copper mugs back in the day before uh, everybody yeah, else yeah, yeah. to give them your id well they had a christmas tiki bar upstairs in the hell or high tiki bar but downstairs dave is churning out americanized indian food to make people that are oftentimes intimidated by things they don't know He's turned it on their head, and he's now got some unbelievably dank food, including a lamb smash burger. Chris, we got to go over there. It's so fucking good. And it's, since you're on the you know the glutton train, we might as well capitalize before you get into the healthy zone. Like I love is, lamb. It's fucking great. And he has a litany of other snacks. His fries are good as well. He tops them with like a tiki masala styled sauce, like it's a tomato-ish um, flavored, but you could get them raw dog as well. And you could just raw dog the shit out of them, um, or stack them on top of your burg. So that may be my best bite since we spoke last as well. Fuck. It's good. All right. So let's dive into the things that have been going on since we all last spoke. There was a shooting at the Supreme court building in Colorado. That's a, sounds like a fun one. We also had a very large camp of migrants that was moved today that started a fire as the moving happened, so the fire department had to come as the buses were loading up the migrants. This city is starting to go to hell in a handbasket. And I'm not saying it's because of our undocumented guests or, you know, unhoused population, but it seems that the city is not actually handling the problems that are plaguing the communities. And also it's getting shot up left and right. There was one right there on Zenobia just recently. Like it seems like we can't catch a break in Denver right here in the new year. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I guess I've been hearing some things like at least like, you know, there's there's a ton of work to do around a lot of things, but at least like we're no longer saying like, oh, this is our plan to fix the homeless and the migrant population. Like at least they're doing finally something. doing something, you know, true. and they've got a couple of hotels rented out that they're putting people in. And it's going to be hard. There's going to be a lot of like a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of things. To, and some people, like, it may not work out the way, you know, it was intended. I think they're trying to solve it with the best information available, and at least they're addressing it. They're not just... Uh, Pretending like it didn't happen. Yeah, the Hancock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, obviously the thing that happened at the Supreme Court had nothing really to do with the Trump situation of him not being on the ballot, which I find comically hilarious. And we'll talk more about that as we get closer to the election because we're not sh- – yeah, we are scared, but we're not super scared of uh, shying away from talking about that. But when I saw that, I was like, what the fuck is going on in downtown Denver? Like – it. I was just, it baffled me. So I was like, shit, I'm just going to bunker down here in this here basement and y'all are going to just have to come to me. I'm going to look like Howard Hughes, Leonardo DiCaprio style, where I just pee in jugs. <laughs> and I think, it, I think it's difficult from both sides too, um, because you, you aren't like purposely trying to like displace people per se, but like some of the, some of these areas where like the encamp- encampments are, like it causes potential safety hazards, you know, if they're, I'm worried sometimes like somebody might fall out onto the road or something like that. So some of them are in scary areas. And the one, the one that they swept today, it's, it's awful just because it's a lot of migrants and they outstayed their time at that hotel that, you know, and so, I mean, it was just, there was like a whole city behind that street yeah like it was you know and i feel so bad but i don't know at least they're trying to solve it and i know there's going to be mistakes but at least we're doing something no i couldn't agree more i think you know they are trying and so that deserves at least a you know a small clap not a big golf clap but a small one but at the same time yeah when i saw that the fire department had to be called today because a fire broke out at the encampments as they were doing the removal of everything it's like Fucking A, you know, like, what are we doing, Cotton? You know, it's, it's driving me crazy that even 
you know, we fuck up a wet dream, I think is a saying that some folks use. I don't know if we use that here on this here podcast, but those are two things I wanted us to talk about briefly, even though we had more pressing matters like, you know, actors dying, new restaurants opening, as well as what's been going on in the Colorado cannabis community. Um, So I just wanted to touch on the current events as we missed Tuesday's episode. In 2024, we're going to do things a little different. I teased it earlier with the video aspects um but what we're also going to do is when we do have guests on they'll still be on thursdays but on tuesdays going forward we're going to start a reverse yelp if y'all want to you can send eve an email eve at stoned hyphen appetite.com you can say negative things about me negative things about Chris, you cannot say negative things about Eve in that email, but you can also, if you work in the hospitality or cannabis space, you know, there's always this Yelp place where someone can go to be a bitch and complain online and be like, oh, look at me. I just needed a spit cup. And now I gave you a one star review because you wouldn't let me dip in your restaurant. We want to let those restaurateurs be able to have a voice without necessarily airing their laundry. So you can be like, Here's a nightmare story from working the front of house this weekend in Rhino. You know, like every week I have to hose off the patio because someone defecates or everyone throws up on it. We want to hear those stories. So send those over to Eve at stoned hyphen appetite, A-P-P-E-T-I-T dot com. And we'll read those on air every Tuesday. So we'll have that open until about Monday afternoon. And then hopefully Eve has to sort through Tens of emails. There's tens of us, for those that watch the rest of development. Um, We'll separate through the tens of emails every week and try to read off either the funniest ones or the true horror stories from working in the hospitality and cannabis space. But also we want to be able to talk about other things. You know, um, one thing I want to be able to talk about is, and it garnered a lot of attention last week, was when we do have tea on the podcast or when we're not all sunshine and roses, We may get a little bit more clicks as well as more engagement and conversation. So much so, I realized this, because we didn't air our dirty laundry about that one account that everybody seems to hate that we all had in our mind at the end of the last episode. And boy, did we get 55 fucking DMs of people asking who it was because they tuned into the podcast to hear us talk shit about someone. The the account was the people from the OCN Eats team um, that came from hospitality workers, PR representatives representatives and people that follow along in the city and the community that we support it yeah and we agree with that wholeheartedly but we just weren't trying to do that every you know like give that guy our stage but what we do want to do is kind of bring out a little bit more tea you know talk a little bit more about it so like there are folks on reddit and folks talking about this list there's something that dropped in the post and on Westward, everyone gave their best restaurants of 2023. Chris and I gave our unbiased opinion, probably brutally biased because we're friends with some of these chefs and teams. Um, but we expect that out of our news publications. What we came to find out this week was that large publications were sending emails out to restaurants, to trucks, to business owners that if they wanted to be on the top 10 best restaurant list, top whatever, then they had to pay accordingly. And so we got a copy of that email with the ranging from $500 to $2,800 to be included in lists on some pages and $5,000 to $7,000 on other pages. And so what I wanted to tell our community listeners is when we look at these publications that we used to look at as like faithful, trusting locations, take that with a little bit of grain of salt because a lot of folks on the Denver food Reddit, as well as a lot of folks on the Denver Reddit are fucking fuming about this restaurant or that restaurant that they went to try and it was mid as fuck. And what they don't know is the reason that restaurant may be on so-and-so's top 10 best restaurants restaurant list is because they paid to be there. But there's a lot of those restaurants that maybe have the financial backings that can throw themselves on this list. Whereas the real good restaurants are not going to either have a marketing firm, a PR firm that they can either pay for, or they reinvesting that kind of money into their own business, into their own community, into their families. So when we talk about supporting local restaurants, we don't mean go look at these big websites or these big newspapers that are now owned by the Gazette or whomever is now owning all of them. Um, 
take those with a little grain of salt because the Reddit pages are on fire with people that are fuming about these restaurants that they tried out and they're mid. And I just want to let you know that those spots are usually reserved for restaurants that have cash. And that's the facts there. We promise to make weed brands, liquor brands. Maybe we'll get some other sponsors in 2024 so that we can go out there and bash restaurants and promote the ones we genuinely like. But we can honestly say here on this podcast that we were not paid to promote any of those that got an award on last week's episode. So I just wanted to hang my hat on that, especially as the world sets ablaze the Reddit page right now, and they're just lighting into restaurants. You know, the one thing, though, is, I mean, there has to be, there have to be on those lists, there have to be like at uh, least one or two restaurants that didn't pay. Like, Yeah, but that's you know. the problem. That is the problem here in Lies. That's the same issue with some of these accounts that we see on social media is that if I trust you because you got paid by, insert my neighbor Felix here, and you're like, this is the best margarita in town. Why the fuck would I trust you when you say that this is the best wonton in town at the next post you do? Like, your clout is gone. Right. So, like, you're, those people are losing their validity in the community yeah. when they put – Eight out of ten are just people that have cash or, you know, things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. And so I'm just giving a heads up, a warning. Be a little bit careful before you go spend $300 on a plate dinner. It's be careful with these lists because that's how it goes. When you see like a synopsis of a restaurant, then you can kind of like when Molly tells you what she likes or Lily tells you like this is a recap from insert restaurant here. Then, you know, they went there. This is what they liked. This is what they highlighted. But if they're like, here's 10 restaurants you should check out in 2024. Those restaurants could very well have paid to be on that list. So take them with a grain of salt. Um, so I'd say hot, read, do your due diligence before dropping $300 on a meal and then taking to Reddit or Yelp and just eviscerating these restaurants. I don't know what I would do besides just, I mean, go absolute ape shit. If you spent $600 and then the chef yelled at you. Because apparently that's happening in town. And I'm uh, like, I would shut that place down. I mean, so this is what's occurring is people are going in here expecting the world and then they're being brought out you know no i think they but they're both in that camp i mean that's what we're here for is like to give people brutally biased takes without the money <laughs> yeah we we are losers yeah we have not monetized this appropriately but at the same time like if i had to go out there and tell you all of these restaurants are great when i know four or five of them aren't then i'm gonna be in a real like you deserve to kind of be put on blast for that you know well that 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 reminds me like a couple of shout outs that we may not have given out in our last episode um, I was thinking of the people over at Funky Flame, like just with their new spot and what that, that was one of my, like when I was thinking about it, I'm really excited about 2024 and for what they're going to do. Cause they got a lot of shit going on. That is a new, that's a restaurant. We should be very, we should have given them their roses on the last one from breakfast. And the, now they're working well into the day, their pizza game this week. It's cheeseburger pizza. I'm on the hunt for the best Detroit pizza in Colorado. Um, obviously I think blue pan is top tier in Denver urban field fucking slays it up in Longmont, but there's like 25 of them that we have to give a whirl. Get sauce is probably the best pop-up, but there's also mile high pizza pie who does a bunch of creative dank pizzas and funky flame is in that creative dank pizza category. So I'm ready to get over there. And it's in that same vein that we talked about with Jan Wonton, giving them that full kitchen to work with. Now yeah. they're going to be able to churn out so many dank items and such varietals of you know like they were kind of confined to their workspace whether it be the parking lots or the trucks or the pop-ups now they have free reign to like really go in there and play around and allison and colton are fucking geniuses and great people so i couldn't agree more chris that's a shout out that's definitely worthy and bias as fuck guest of the pod <laughs> never paid us a dollar we love them yeah. we may have gotten one loaf of bread that is true in that, the beginning that what is it that hippie loaf yeah yeah i still remember it i will take payment in gluten that's actually <laughs> love bread. never mind you can bribe me with a quality piece of bread <laughs> um but yeah so expect a little bit more 
piping hot tea in the coming months. We're going to start calling people on their bullshit, whether it's restaurants, whether it's publications, whether it's social media people. But we're also going to let restaurants call bullshit on people leaving one star Yelp reviews because they don't know what the fuck ramen is or a cold sesame noodle or any of those things. For the people that also complain about things being too spicy at maybe ethnic restaurants, I want those restaurateurs to send us emails. Be like, don't complain about the lazy G at Hop Alley. Don't go on Yelp and be like, this fried chicken was too spicy. It's quite literally spicy fucking chicken. It comes out with Szechuan peppers. Don't be so fucking yeah. obtuse. Like, know what you're fucking doing. And if you don't order, like, order it spice free. I know tons of white people that do that. And it's a different spice than most people are accustomed to. Like, the Szechuan spice hits different. Yeah, the lingering. I had the eat, I had the bird call sandwich that Penelope Wong, shout out chef of the year, um, is teaming up with Bird Call and World Central Kitchen to do like a burger of the month or a chicken sandwich of the month, and hers is they're dipping it in her Szechuan chili oil. <laughs> oh, Chris, it's fucking good. I was like, God damn, I don't usually eat, you know, like fast food or whatever, but. I might have to go get a chicken sandwich this weekend. Dude, the one in five points is easy. You can get in and get out, and they do- they donate mm. a dollar every that, time. That one's that one's in the old place of Tom. Mm, it I gives can't you PTSD. Go to that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. They've got a bunch of different locations. Tom's Home Cooking, Eve, this was before your time when you God. were like six, but it was a southern restaurant run by these gentlemen who I think still live in Denver because I follow them on social media, and we talk about them once every now and then unbelievable blue plate specials which was what we called them in the south for blue collar workers that could get quick you know service and meat go. And three meat and threes were ungodly fried chicken and catfish the size of my thigh it was awesome and mississippi farm raised catfish so you know they were like unhealthy as fuck just fatty fillets Oh, my God. It was great. Oh, but the lemonade this- was delicious. Eve, we would have had so many business braining storm sessions there. <laughs> so many what? Business brains, braining storm. Did I say braining storm? <laughs> Shout out to our Brainstorming. friends. Brainstorming. <laughs> Shout out to our friends at Open. <laughs> that, you did it twice, and the second time you didn't even realize you did it the first time. Um, That's why I'm going to go into work. Hey, y'all, y'all want to have a braining storm? <laughs> Yeah, just lean me like, hey, we heard it on the podcast. You had a, a seizure. Um, but, yeah, so get ready. 2024, we're coming out with more tea. We're swinging a little bit harder. And you'll be sure to follow us on our YouTube page. We're going to do strain reviews. We're going to do product reviews from bongs to kitchen equipment. I got all sorts of new goodies for Christmas. And we're also going to have chefs do some takes on edibles. So we're going to have a lot of all of that. So if you're trying to make homemade you know, brownies with 10 milligrams in each one. We're going to have some professionals show you the guiding light, and you can find all that on the Stoned Appetite YouTube page. Did I miss anything? Do we want to give our an ode to the, the actors who passed away? Tom and Andre. Tom Wilkinson, from the bad guy from Batman Begins, um, as well as... What was his best role, Eve? How many times did you – was he on the Weinstein list or the Epstein logs? I don't know. He's old and he's famous and powerful. Okay. Powerful people in that – you never know. Is he British? No? No. Well, what's your favorite movie that he was in? God damn it, Eve. Okay, well, name one of your favorites. This is just awkward now. I know, Eve, to be you got to be ready person. for these hot takes, especially in categories related to your – Knowledge base. You're, we hired you because you're supposed to be the kick-ass movie person. And here you are. You can't even tell us about Michael Clayton or the full Monty. And especially with such an older gentleman. Like, this, he was he was in his prime when you were loving those films. Yeah, and don't forget, he was the... You, the reason you were wondering if he was British was because he was the bad guy in The Patriot, Chris. Remember that? that with the wig? Yep. Not the guy that brought down dick. the church, but the overall, you know. He let it happen. Yeah. Or directed Under it. his nose. Yeah, the general. Yeah. So, I mean, there was, a, he did a lot. He did a real lot. And obviously, there was another passing since the last time we spoke. Andre Brower um, from Brooklyn. Brower? What happened? Yeah. Was it unexpected? Because, I mean, he was a little bit older than us. Was it just age? I mean, I don't know. You're supposed to be the movie person. 
and I know this one's TV. He's more Brooklyn Nine Nine for those that remember. He was the uh, dry witted boss, aka Sarge. I think he's been in movies. Oh damn, that is young. Oh shit. Mm. That's why we're doing all these edible things, Chris. So that we're around doing this podcast when we're 61. And we put down the lung darts. Yes. I stopped smoking cigarettes three years ago ish. Except for like, you know, Vegas and Europe. Yeah. And, you I know, mean, late nights. And <laughs> at the, wait. I dialed in. Oh, Frasco. Yeah, see, things like that. You know, that sometimes it happens. I was like, dialed in doesn't. But have you aren't you aren't buying a pack. Yeah, I haven't bought a pack of Parliaments in three plus years. I saw the other day they're twelve dollars. I was like, God damn! That's, How do people smoke? I mean, I'm not sharing cigarettes with folks if I'm paying for that kind of price. Um, <laughs> at the same time, uh, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors. If you do find yourself in one of these predicaments, you'd be glad you had health insurance. So reach out to Connect for Health Colorado. That's a great segue and plug. Brings the whole episode right back. How'd we do, Eve, on a scale of 1 to 10? Okay. I'll take it. That's yeah. a C. That's a, my dad would have been so proud if I could have a 7 out of 10 every, th- every time. Um, I was a classic 6 out of 10. Ooh, those hurt. Yeah. Oh. And it started with never doing summer reading. Like, I just always started with a D or an F in English and had to use those last three quarters to get back so that I didn't have to repeat a year. Did you do a lot of extra no, credit? No, I didn't do any of those things. I just didn't even care. I just, I don't, I, did, I wasn't a reader, if that's not apparent. And I wasn't a big school person, especially in the summertime. That's prime swimming and mozzarella and icy season. So I was getting cheese sticks and drinking icies and swimming all along. What did I you was do swimming a, a lot. Yeah, what did you do as a kid? Not eat cheese sticks and Coke Icy's? <laughs> and slip and slides. Well, thanks. They uh, do go well. I forgot where we left off. Goddamn marijuana. Mozzarella sticks and yeah. Icy's. I don't know what you had, but those were staples at all pools, bowling r- roller rinks, everywhere. I don't, what was your summertime snack growing up? That's fair. Chris? I don't know. I, uh, I mean, yeah, that and fucking uh, chicken, chicken tendies, yeah. chicken club chicken tendies with a side of honey mustard. Ooh. That's not a bad call. Um, before we get out of here, it's obviously the first episode of the new year. Is it still recording, Eve? Hell yeah! Let's get New Year's resolutions from everybody. I'm going to try to dial back a little bit on saying "cunt." That's my podcast resolution to y'all. What are you looking at? <laughs> I'll say cunt once an episode. What about you, Chris? What's your resolution for the podcast this year? More photos of shrimp quesadillas? Yeah, definitely more photos of shrimp quesadillas. Um, but no, uh, I think, um, I guess just product reviews. All right. Give product reviews. Chris is going to do more product reviews. And to be honest, y'all want his reviews. He's worked in high-end kitchens across the area. He eats edibles from 2 milligrams to 50 to, damn it, I should have said 200. 2 to 200 would have been better. You want his reviews. This motherfucker eats edibles like I eat purple Skittles. Eve, what's your resolution? She's like, i got to find a new podcast to work for. <laughs> Good luck. We're the only one in the area. Okay, that's fair. That's fucking fair. Guess what we're about to order, and we're gonna hold. We're gonna do a video of you putting it together in the dark. Well, you or Chris? I have a bad back. You've worked on movie sets. That's not how desks work, Eve. It's a perfect TikTok. We'll see. We'll do a bet. We'll see how long it takes you to put it together. Or we could buy two, and I'll race you. We'll oh. see. <laughs> only one. <laughs> ah, shit. Well, who's going to do this other one? Since you know how to do that. I mean, he, Chris did put together the pa- the patio uh, heaters really well. So maybe. Nobody blew up yet. Why don't we do a challenge for Chris and see how many, like every 10 minutes he has to eat 10 milligrams and see how long it takes him to do. I'll help you with this. That Maybe that's what we do. 
<laughs> See, that's when you make mistakes, though. <laughs> yeah, each that's desk is going to be set up. <laughs> it's going to look like a mountaintop. Like one piece that was supposed to be opposite sides is going to be inside, outside. It's not going to be good. Okay. All right. Well, then we're getting her a desk. We're making content out of the create our building of the desk. I'm going to say less of the C word, and Chris is going to review a lot more products for y'all, and all of that will be available on our YouTube. Did we miss anything? We done? Mm-mm. Let's get out of here. Until next week, we will be back on our regularly scheduled regimen of two episodes per week. Don't forget to get insurance if you don't have it. Stay high. Stay hungry, Colorado. Hot tea. I'll take it. Cheers. I'll take it.